Hey, welcome back. We're at Brento Cast 19. Another week has gone by. It's fall here in North Carolina, and folks are friendly and happy in general. So, because they're out of the uh, sweltering summertime that we have had, even though we've had a couple of days where it's snapped back to like 70 degrees, nothing too bad, and everybody is mostly in a fine mood. Unless something sets them off, like uh, set my wife off yesterday morning, and she tore into me like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Actually, for something I didn't do. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you got to be ready to roll with the punches if you're married, like me. And, uh, you know, oddly enough, I, uh, I ended up having... I had a pretty good day, despite her terrible attitude uh, yesterday, but... Um, I um, managed to uh, do a lot with uh, music yesterday. We had a kind of a live rehearsal with Ansel Brown, me and Harrison, and are prepping a couple of his songs for him to kind of come and sing with us at a performance next weekend. And really, it was just a lot of repetition, two songs over and over and over. <clears throat> the kind of thing that would normally, I would find tedious. It was fun. But uh, having done the performance on uh, Saturday night at uh, back on, I guess, the 20, what was that? Saturday night would have been the 22nd. We were at Backstreet Mercantile in Gold Hill once again. Had a, We were supposed to play an hour. We ended up playing like an hour and 30 minutes, but it was, uh, it was super fun and a uh, good crowd. Did a live stream of that on Brent Bowers. Uh, if you find me on Facebook, it wasn't. I shared it on Brent Bowers Music, but it's actually on my regular Facebook wall. Also made some recordings of that with the GoPro, which I'll be slowly rolling out over the next couple of days. But um, I had a great time. And uh, so as such, yesterday at the end of the day, I was really kind of, all of my creativity had been spent. <clears throat> and I went home, just watched a little bit of YouTube, and um, went to sleep and ended up having like nightmares about my former workplace. And I realized that over all the years, you know, working at uh, this place, I worked 16 years there. It was a large bank. Eventually got, I actually went through two mergers where the name of the bank changed, uh, <clears throat> changed names. And even though it's easy to figure out who this person is by looking at my profile, who this company is, I will just say that it started out being a pretty great place to, to, to work. Really cool people, fun people learning and, you know, on the job and actually just really, really having a fruitful time there for, you know, about, gosh, I guess 12 years when the merger started happening, you know, things became different. And then ultimately by the last contract that I worked there, it's, well, I ultimately put, you know, uh, I told all of my uh, recruiters, I don't want to work there again. So don't, you know, don't send me offers for that place. But basically a big, big company with that many employees you know, it's not their strategy to pay everybody what they're worth and to always give you kudos for a job well done. In fact, the only time they say anything is if you happen to miss some sort of deadline and it doesn't necessarily have to be your fault. And, um, you know, that in contrast to what I do now as a massage therapist, I can make sure that every single massage I do is the best that person has ever experienced. And that's generally what I try to do. Um, And I stand by that, you know, it's like when I'm tired of doing massage, I'll just stop doing it. Um, I mean, I'm financially in a position where I can do that now and that makes a difference. But, you know, in the IT world, you're only as good as the weakest link of a project chain. You know, like if the uh, if the stakeholders don't get involved early enough, which is often the case, and then want to come in at the last minute and say, well, I wanted purple. I'm like, well, you know, we've been working on this for six weeks and you've never mentioned purple. And also purple's not in the style guide. You know, uh, things like that. You run into people that... Um, you know, because their line of business makes money, they think they can walk on, you know, the so-called worker bees and treat people like dirt. And I never said much about this back when I was working there because, I mean, the place did all versions of this company paid me well. So I didn't leave thinking I had been cheated or time had been just taken from me for nothing. They all paid me well. But, you know, in the end, uh, it turned into a place where I did notice tendencies to um, get rid of men and put women in those positions because they could pay them less. Uh, that's not ethical. And a lot of other unethical things went on, and just generally how they treated contractors toward the end. As opposed, and, and of course, they switched from a full time model to having eighty percent contractors. And there's a there's a bit of prejudice that goes toward contractors. It's like you're a, they already treat their employees like disposable assets. You know, there's no your brand loyalty does not 
uh, turned into their loyalty to you. And uh, many of my friends left this this place many, many years before I did and went on to have you know better jobs in other companies, and I should have done that. Um, and I think it kind of bothers me on a deep personal level that I didn't do that, and I let that sort of get away from me. And, I mean, I thought there was a time when I thought I would be working at a large bank for the rest of my working years because I was having – you know, getting plenty of great feedback, paid well, maybe not advanced financially as often as I should have been, but still paid well. And uh, and, and I, I look forward to going to work every day. I took pride in my work and I was happy to be a professional artist, you know, and not being a person with tr- that many traditional art skills, just a designer, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of like... Uh, sort of hurt um, when that that whole, whole thing ended because of the final merger. Um, you know, like I didn't do anything to cause this to happen, but yet this career that I thought I had forever ultimately went away, and then I became this lesser version of myself, a lower valued per version of myself as a contractor. Even though, ironically, you were paid more cash, you were still paid. You were still, you know, with benefits and whatnot that you didn't get. You were still sort of a lesser, lesser employee and whatnot. But anyway, so last night I'm having a dream about this, and the dream is. I, one uh, contract that I did two different times, uh, they actually extended at one time. So I know they were happy with me, but every contract was met, uh, met every every um, deadline was met except for one when they allowed uh, the requester to keep on piling on additional stuff. We call that scope creep in the industry. And I had to just say, look, um, I can't meet this. I can't meet this because, you know, that you let them pile on to me and here it is Friday and, you know, you told me not to work overtime. So here I am at six o'clock on Friday and they've added like, you know, 12 more pages on me or whatever. And I just, I can't get it done. And, um, I remember the person and I really look up to her too, but you know, when she became a manager, the attitude changed a little bit. And that's another one of their strategies. If there's somebody who's really like, you know, in and everybody has everybody's respect. That's the people they, they look to make managers. And, uh, and I think she was a good manager, too. But in this case, I remember I uh, heard this in her voice. It's like she says, in future, you need to let me know earlier. In future, not in the future. She says, in future. And I thought, oh, that's kind of a curt way of saying that. And then, you know, lo and behold, that contract ultimately goes away and doesn't come back anymore. And I thought, you know what? That's great. Because if, 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 you know, 16 years of amazing performance, all-star performance, uh, can't stand up to one. Let's say that it was my fault, that it wasn't scope creep, that I had just mismanaged my time, which was not the case. But let's say that it was. If, if 14 years, ultimately 16 years of great service isn't enough to uh, counterbalance one mistake, I don't want to work for a company like that. But, you know, at the time, I took it on the chin, and I went on and made, you know, more money to other companies and stuff. And uh, But then eventually I just decided IT, I was done with IT. I mean, 16 years is enough. I wanted to do something that made me feel good about what I was doing, you know, not making rich uh, folks that I don't know richer. Um, and I think back to that, and I, apparently, like, I let it go on the, you know, the surface, but subconsciously it's always bothered me. So uh, last night I have this dream of those events. And I don't think it was just that specific event. It was just, um, an email coming and saying, uh, the red email, the red email and outlook. Uh, it's like, you know, these people are complaining. They didn't get what they want. And I know it wasn't your fault. And here's the seven reasons. I know it wasn't your fault. This wasn't given to you. Right. That wasn't given to you. Right. Blah, blah, blah. And this is just my subconscious saying, you know, like don't hold me accountable for somebody else's mistake. But ultimately, uh, the buck doesn't stop with the manager or the, the, the head of the group, it stops with the worker bee, you know, because they are going to, uh, with the exception, ironically, of this particular job, the the, the big boss who, they, they put a manager between me and the big boss, but he used to be the actual manager. He was the only manager that I ever had in 16 years that when folks would come and try to make out like they had given you everything they were supposed to and you just didn't deliver, he would be, well, let me, uh, let me look at this. Uh, let me, let's look at the documentation. Oh, here, I see you didn't mention this at all. Oh, I see right here. Here's all your requirements. I, I don't hear purple. I don't see purple in there. And you could just hear them like the wheels uh, spinning in their mind trying to get out of it and backing up. Like a bus, this guy actually an English uh, expat, awesome, awesome, best boss I ever had. Love the guy, still have great feelings about him. But uh, anyway, I just it's funny how your mind tackles stuff like that, so that you don't, um, you know, you don't have to like 
carry some sort of guilt for something that you really wasn't your fault ultimately. And uh, I don't know, just uh, machinations. And it only tends to happen to me either when I've had something odd to eat for like a late night meal or I'm super, super, super tired. And I think I guess I was just super tired and exhausted creatively. So it opened up the door for those little uh, – those little uh, – ghosts of the past to come in and i mean i haven't worked in it for a long time many 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 years um but uh it, it's funny it's just funny uh but that's a world that I'm, I'm glad to be out of and uh massage therapy of course is it's ultimately gratifying because you do a good job the person gets off the table and they're like wow man i completely feel different thank you so much you know tip you whatever um so that's uh that's always a positive thing and it's great to see the effects of what you're doing right then and there Um, I've had, I have some really good clients. Um, I'm always trying to cultivate the better client and maybe minimize the, there, I don't have any bad clients, but I have some clients that are a little podunk and frankly don't understand the culture of spa work in general. Um, they think they can show up 10 minutes late instead of 10 minutes early and everything's fine. They think they can just tell you they're coming and not have a booked appointment. They don't understand the tipping structure. Um, things of this nature. But uh, in general, most of my clients are absolutely fantastic. And so very happy to be doing this now. And it's something that makes me uh, feel gratified at the end of the day versus a, a job that, you know, at a certain point, you just stop having any feelings about. But um, yeah, it's all good, man. Um, so moving right along, this week, we had an awesome time with Delilah. Um, got to keep her, uh, spend some time with her on an extra day. Usually, I don't start hanging out with her till Thursday. And she came by on, I think, Tuesday and we we spent some time and uh, went and had lunch with my mom and brother and um, hung out with her a little bit played with her and for a few hours and then you know regular time started on Thursday we uh, did some exploring went up to Mara Mountain went and checked out the uh, well actually she fell asleep the first day we were going to the museum at Mara Mountain um, and then we went back the second day and she fell asleep again. <laughs> and then ultimately I took her over there. Uh, I think it was like late on Friday, uh, for the second, the third time. And she, she was awake for that. So we actually went in, but, uh, something about those winding roads and listening to music with that dapple sunlight, just filtering through the window that just knocks her out immediately. Um, they had a big powwow down, uh, in Baden. I did not get to it, although we did see it getting set up. We didn't get back because I had that performance uh, set up uh, for Saturday uh, at 5. So when, when we finished up at the store, we had to really kind of get things together and go up there. That was really a fun time. She had a great time. We always get her a toy at the Mercantile. It's kind of old-timey toy. So in this case, it was a, a couple of Christmas lights that you – they're rubber. They're like the Christmas lights, but you drop them or bounce them, and they, they light up. And then she got a little barn with, like, animal-shaped holes and wooden animals that you just slide through those holes. And she thought that was neat. Of course, she had a big time eating uh, pizza, which apparently we just stared at. But, um, but yeah, she had a good time. And uh, fun was had by all. Some of the, some more of the locals got down there, so it was cool to play for some of them. But in general, great times with her this weekend. So, um, talking about Daz 3D for a second, um, did not get my uh, will not get my Oswolf creature out in time for um, Halloween because they came back with all kinds of things that they want changed on it, which whatever. Um, but they have now dropped Genesis nine. And I got to say the base drop was highly faulty. Couldn't even get the figure to load for the first day. And now when it loads, the presets for the skin really mess up, uh, the arms and there's, there's terrible, terrible seams. And unfortunately it applies to third party products. Like I tried to buy another, um, another, uh, like texture for her and it, it, it screws that one up too. So I can get the texture fix to work on her. But then when I try something like a third party werewolf by raw art, it does not work. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to give that like a week and hope that they just update that. And I have a working version of it because I mean, I I spent money on that for the pre-release figure and you know, you just can't trust Daz to have a solid release that has no errors. And I, I, I don't even really blame them. I think it's probably got to do with the way that they do their load sharing across servers when you install through the one of uh, with one of three methods that you have for installing there's a lot that can go wrong and uh, you know maybe something just slipped through qa it's just odd to me that more people aren't seeing this and that i'm seeing it but um you know uh i, I don't know 
eventually, eventually, hopefully it'll work itself out and I won't have to go to too much trouble with it because it really sucks. But I see, I see a lot of people resisting. It is a superior figure, no doubt about it. But the fact that the poses don't work and the clothes don't work from former generations well on it, uh, people are really revolting. And I see that meaning like a longer lifespan for the uh, Genesis 8 and 8.1 uh, figure base. And that's a good thing for me because I still have products for those. So, But uh, we'll see how that goes. But I, I would have hoped that would have been handled a little bit better. But it was not. I had a chance to watch a really spooky movie the other night with Nancy called The Night House. And it was really, really creepy and pretty cleverly written. Um, the night before that, when we kept Delilah on Thursday, I think she and I watched something uh, that was kind of a kid's Halloween. And I'm trying to find the title for that because I thought it was pretty good. Um, it was starring one of the Wayans brothers and had to do with an ancient curse that released this... Uh, pumpkin got kind of guy that could animate anything and turn it into a, a real live um, monster. In other words, it, like a zombie animatronic would turn into a real zombie and a witch animatronic would turn into a, a real witch. And it's kind of a cool concept. Um, it's like the curse of something. Uh, I'm not finding it, but, um, but it was, it was really cool. Um, I would recommend it by name if I could actually find it, but it's looking like it's not coming up. So sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, as far as the, the big movies, not really, not really. I haven't went to see black Adam yet. Although I would like to, if time permits one even pop over there, it's actually on at the local theater, which I can walk to from my office and, uh, I'll give it a shot. I don't expect big things. The trailer did not excite me. Um, it's not so much that I think it's some sort of woke thing, which that will prevent me from going to see a movie sometimes. But in this case, it's not so much that just that the trailer, I don't know anything about that character. I, I couldn't tell you the basis of that character. You know, I think Hollywood is, you know, they've, they've kind of ruined the Marvel universe with the wokey, the wokey mess. And, uh, now they're just trying to dig deeper for these other, uh, other characters and you know I'm, I'm okay with a digging deeper in the comic lore but like i i just wish it was somebody that i knew something about you know although i will say that i did enjoy the moon knight and that was another figure that until probably six years ago when somebody gave me like an omnibus uh for that for that comic i had no idea and i never even read the comic but i i looked at it and it looked really cool and um <laughs> you know i i look at comic books for the art to inspire sort of my comic panels when I make my 3D comics. I don't really spend a lot of time reading them, just a couple things. Um, I'm nearsighted as can be, and it takes a lot of time. I have to, like, get glasses or whatever. Although the times that I do read comics typically are when I go on vacation and I have some time to sit on a deck somewhere and read, and I'm planning on doing that um, for my, my birthday weekend coming up. But I digress. I most often look at them just for in inspiration on art styles and uh, panel layout and in lettering. But um, in the case of Black Adam, I have seen nothing, nothing. I went into the comic shop. We, we do have a pretty good comic shop here in Albemarle, which is crazy to me because now they're so hard to find. But I guess the lady down there is not doing you know, not feeling great or whatnot because she was in the back a whole lot. And ultimately, I ended up leaving without buying anything, which was a shame because I definitely was there to buy. But uh, the, tr the the fact of the matter is I can, for a comic book over there, I mean, uh, this is just a brutal reality of Ollie's. I mean, Ollie's is, uh, they sell like uh, uh, omnibuses for like five, four and five dollars, you know, like that's a whole series. And that's like eight dollars a book if you go to the comic shop. Although I will spend that if it's something new that grabs my eye. Um my favorite genre of comics is the vampire genre. And the only thing about that is that, like, they release so much stuff. You can go in there on a weekly basis and see four new uh, stories starting. You, so you really can't keep up with them all. you got to be real selective about what you pick. But um, anyway, uh, I, I do like those. And But I've been getting some really cool stuff at Ollie's, some omnibuses for this Grim Tales. And it's um, – they can be – the stories are all over the place, but the art's always – consistently high quality and a lot of cool stuff you get a nice thick book for you know five bucks shoot i mean it takes me a while to read that because as i said i don't get a ton of time to work on it but hopefully i will get to doing a um comic 3d comic version of my full-length feature script uh the red woman and i have another 
you know, property that I consider mine, which is Respawner, which I, I want to make a, a more complete story of that than what you saw in my uh, live action film. So both of those I really hope to give. And I, I did kind of give Respawner the uh, comic treatment. If you look me up on, uh, let's see, it's, uh, if you look for uh, <clears throat> Permanent Midnight Comic Respawner, you will find a version of that I did. Not super high quality art, but it is 3D. Um, but I've, I've came so far since then. Rendering has came so far since then. I really want to redo that story uh, and tell it completely as opposed to sort of just let it fall off a cliff like it does right now. But, uh, yeah, I'm really upset on that, right? But check that out. Uh, there's a, a My Web comic. Let me, I'm going to see if I can uh, find that for you um, and just mention where you can easily get to it. Um, Permanent Midnight was the name of a film. And uh, sometimes if you don't put Respawner at the end, you won't get the proper results in your search engine. So I searched for Permanent Midnight Respawner, and that's going to take you to ComicFury.com, and I have it up on Comic Fury, and you can actually view the whole thing. Let me see how many pages this is. So go to webcomic. Um, now what I did here was just single panel sort of, not exactly 16 by 9, but sort of a wider screen. And let me see. We'll go to the last page. That's not showing me how many pages. Quite a few, though, I would imagine. Comic 1, 2, if I jump to the end. 27 pages. 27 page no uh, graphic novel uh, that tells sort of the uh, story of the respawner. Uh, character that I created, and, and I, I'm, there's some good stuff. I, I did some good work in this. Some of the uh, the gore I had to um, sort of hand draw, and that that kind of is a little juxtaposed. But I did some pretty interesting panel work. I think I used uh, smart layers with Photoshop to do this, as opposed to like a way layout tool like uh, um, 3D Comic Comic Life which I will be using for the replacement. And I just want to have more on each page. I did these bigger panels and did some, uh, some of them were just complete panels, the one page, one panel, but then I did some cut up ones too that look kind of cool. And uh, I just want to retail that with a more complete, uh, the same character, different story, I guess is what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, I, I, I do dig how I was able to dig into the old archives. I've been collecting assets. There's a thing where a, a girl like, blows apart an animated skeleton and that looks really good to me and it's, there's volumetric crowd clouds so it does use iray but i was just getting into iray and iray has come along and there's a lot of like comedy in this as well well surprise assholes mama's home now who wants seconds <laughs> so yeah i i want to redo this I, I can do it so much better there's some really cool looking outfits and characters in this i would probably rely on some of the same base shapes for the characters and just do a little better job of uh planning out the shots and uh yeah afterlife There's, it deals with the afterlife and where your spirit goes during the afterlife if you were to temporarily be removed from your body and uh replaced by like a demon that could give you superpowers basically in a nutshell but anyway this episode is running long guys so glad to be back with uh episode 19 and we'll look for, look forward to a few more episodes before Christmas. Oh, one thing I did want to say is that I have now that I'm, I'm going publishing through Spreaker. If you go to brentbowers.com, you will see that I have updated the uh, the layout so that now there's just simply a um, a selection in the left hand nav that says podcasting, and if you go to that. It will. It says the podcast is back. Boom! If you go to that, it will give you every single episode uh, across five pages uh, in uh, chronological order. So yeah, it does start you at the beginning. So in other words, if you want to hear the latest version, the latest one, jump to page five. But that's just one click. Put you on page five, and you'll see the last three episodes. I will add this episode today once I publish it. But uh, as of right now, I have a uh, 9.30 uh, client, so I've got to get ready for that. But uh, yeah, I will be doing at least one episode from the beach. We're going to be there for four days or so on my birthday weekend coming up in a couple of weeks. So uh, 
yeah, I look forward to that. And then, of course, there'll be a Christmas episode. And I want to do a guest episode. I am still struggling with the idea of doing these on my desktop, but the phone is working out pretty good as long as I'm in a quiet space. Um, so I may just keep doing them from the phone. But uh, eventually I want to get some specialized headphones, USB headphones and a microphone and uh, start doing them at the desk through the computer But um, or just have that option, you know. To do that now, I have to set up like my Zoom recorder, and then that's transferring files. And I just want to keep this thing light and airy. I have not yet propagated to iTunes for a very good reason. I want to nail down my format before I do all that. And these are largely, you know, for me anyway. But it will it will be moved out there in the larger space. So you know, I'm not looking at it for hits right now. Um, it's just about me and my own sort of um, documentation of the week's events, particularly for Delilah, if she ever wants to check it out, who knows, but, uh, yeah, it just gives me, it's very cathartic, lets me talk out my issues, oh, I had a bad dream last night, you know, that kind of thing, but anyway, hope you guys have a great week, and we'll be back soon in a further episode.